Hi everybody, good to see you again as usual. And uh, well, let's see, I'm back just trying to protect myself from the sun that's coming up because it's kind of bright, so you might not be able to see me, but you know who you should see is Jesus. That's who you want to see clearly in His Word because His Word is what is going to stand. You know, the things that uh, people of the world that have rejected Christ, uh, they don't have a truth to stand on. So their word is not going to go on forever, but God's word will be everlasting. So we're in Jeremiah. He's appointed by God. Let's see, we saw in chapter 2 that they were charged. And then chapter 4, verse 12, I think, they were sentenced for judgment. And now we're looking at this 6, 7, and 8. They're going to have to prepare for war. Den of thieves, their bones would be scattered like dung on the ground. Flee for safety, O people of Benjamin. From the midst of Jerusalem, blow the trumpet of Tekoa and raise the signal of Beth Harshem. For disaster looms out of the north and great destruction. So this disaster that we're looking at from the north, of course, at this time, 586 B.C., is Babylon. And they're not innocent. They're not victims. But what they are is they have made other people the victims is what they've done, and God doesn't like it. The lovely and delicately bred I will destroy, the daughter of Zion delicate it's the loveliest of pastures is what it is and here you got these other shepherds that are coming in see the shepherd you need is the good shepherd which is jesus christ okay shepherds with their flock shall come against her they shall pitch their tents around her they shall pasture each in his place prepare war against her arise and let us attack at noon Woe to us, for the day declines, for the shadows of evening lengthen. Arise and let us attack by night and destroy her palaces. So they're getting attacked by day and by night. Um, now there's the warfare. The weapons of our warfare are not carnal. They're mighty. See, they're uh, against spiritual hosts uh, in the heavenlies. Remember how in the book of Revelations we see that uh, Satan is released a short time. And what's he released a short time for? deceiving the nations and you know even at our time now now people have gone through this throughout history the time here with the destruction then the time 40 years after jesus was crucified you see that people couldn't even trust one another uh, there were people that were quite deceptive within all the powers that they had in rebellion even con destroying their whole financial system uh, uh, until they themselves ended up having, uh, well, Rome destroyed uh, Jerusalem again and the temple 40 years after Christ. But now there, there were people, if you go back and read the history uh, 70 AD when Jerusalem and the temple were destroyed, you'll see it, it's not unlike our time even now. For thus says the Lord of hosts, cut down her trees, cast up a siege mound against Jerusalem. A lot of Jews, they wanted to go out to the Romans and, and surrender and just have it good like it was before. But the uh, Jews that were in control were killing their fellow Jews, not letting them escape. And then uh, with some of the siege weapons that were put in, it's really interesting because you'll see around that temple area, you had posts for the Romans. And what they were doing is Romans were putting up siege engines up there once they got through the walls and then the Jews were digging tunnels underneath, which was really smart and clever, putting a bunch of wood in there, then setting it on fire and collapsing the whole tower. So just things that it reminds me of here. This is the city that must be punished. There is nothing but oppression within her. Yeah, they have been very oppressive towards their own people. As a well keeps its fresh water, so she keeps fresh her evil. Violence and destruction are heard within her. Sickness and wounds are ever before her. Be warned, O Jerusalem, lest I turn from you in disgust, lest I make you a desolation, an uninhabited land. This desolation, even the very words that Jesus used, Jesus used with them at his time. Thus says the Lord of hosts, and the Lord of hosts is Lord of the armies. They shall glean thoroughly as a vine the remnant of Israel. 
like a grape gatherer, pass your hand again over its branches. To whom shall I speak and give warning, that they may hear? Behold, their ears are uncircumcised. Yeah, God wants uh, this circumcision, but really what he was looking for is a circumcision of the people inside. But here, their ears aren't even circumcised. They cannot listen. Behold, the word of the Lord is to them an object of scorn. Wow. So the word of the Lord is an object of scorn. Well, Jesus is the word. In the beginning was the word. The word was with God and the word was God. Yeah, they scorned Jesus and look what happened to him. They take no pleasure in it. Wow. Yeah, they had no pleasure in Jeremiah, the other prophets, and in Jesus. Therefore, I am full of the wrath of the Lord. I am wary of holding it in. Pour it out upon the children in the street and upon the gatherings of young men also. Both husband and wife shall be taken. Okay, the taken. That's going to be destroyed. The elderly and the very aged. Their houses shall be turned over to others, their fields and wives together. For I will stretch out my hand against the inhabitants of the land, declares the Lord. For from the least to the greatest of them, everyone is greedy for unjust gain. And from prophet to priest, everyone deals falsely. They have healed the wound of my people lightly, saying, Peace, peace, when there was no peace. So, yeah, they don't even have a true word of God. They're making up words of God. They're false. When uh, the true prophet, when he comes with the true words, then they want to get rid of him, and they want to throw him in a pit and put him in bounds, and they want to bring him before priests and slap him, just like they did Jesus. Were they ashamed when they committed abominations? No, they were not at all ashamed. They did not know how to blush. Therefore, they shall fall among those who fall. At that time that I will punish them, they shall be overthrown, says the Lord. Wow, they should have been ashamed of what they had done. At least if you're ashamed, uh, you know you did wrong and you can turn around back to God. Thus says the Lord, stand by the roads and look and ask for the ancient paths where the good way is and walk in it and find rest for your souls. Well, Jesus Christ is our rest and uh, we should be walking with him. Yeah, in the Garden of Eden, they walked with God, didn't they? But they said, we will not walk in it. I set watchmen over you saying, pay attention to the sound of the trumpet. But they said, we will not pay attention. Therefore, hear, O nations, and know, O congregation, what will happen to them. Hear, O earth, behold, I am bringing disaster upon this people, the fruit of their devices, because they have not paid attention to my words. And as for my law, they have rejected it. So think about it. Where Jesus is that word, they had rejected him. Now, do we want to reject what Jesus says? No, because if we reject him, we've got nothing but destruction where he has eternal life and love for us to have following him and what does jesus say the meek will inherit the earth all right what used to me is frankincense that comes from sheba or sweet cane from a distant land your burnt offerings are not acceptable nor nor your sacrifices pleasing to me yeah god really wasn't pleased with sacrifice He's not looking for all that bloodshed, but he had to shed his own blood once for all for every one of us. Therefore, says the Lord, behold, I will lay before this people stumbling blocks against which they shall stumble. Fathers and sons together, neighbors and friends shall perish. Well, the main stumbling block really is Jesus. He's that stone that the builders rejected, that chief capstone, and it would be a stumbling block to them. And Jesus said, uh, whoever falls on this stone will be broken, but whoever it falls on will be crushed to powder. Thus says the Lord, Behold, a people is coming from the north country. A great nation is stirring from the farthest parts of the earth. They lay hold on bow and javelin. They are cruel and have no mercy. The sound of them is like the roaring sea. They ride on horses, set in array as a man for battle. Yeah, that's interesting. Jesus came in on a donkey, but you see him in Revelations 19, 11, he rides a white horse. And uh, so there's a warfare going on. And uh, you know, that warfare that's going on, we're in warfare right now, uh, a spiritual warfare. 
And so Jesus Christ is leading an army in warfare even as we speak. So we who are with him are, uh, yeah, soldiers of the Most High God. He is the captain of our salvation. So it's against you, O daughters of Zion. We have heard the report of it. Our hands fall helpless. Anguish has taken hold of us. Pain as of a woman in labor. Go not out into the field, nor walk on the road. For the enemy has a sword. Terror is on every side. Well, our Lord has a sword too, doesn't he? And we have a sword. The uh, Word of God. O daughter of my people, put on sackcloth and roll in ashes. Make mournings as for an only son, most bitter lamentation, for suddenly this destroyer will come upon us. I have made you as a tester of metals among my people. We, we are being tested uh, so that we are refined like real pure gold, something that's going to last, not like stubble that is going to be burnt in a fire. And so people who are, uh, you know, out there preaching, you know, some of the stuff that they're gathering up, uh, I hope it stands true, but uh, well, if you're going to stand true, you need the true Word of God. We need to be uh, immersed in um, the Word of God, don't we? And uh, Because in time of need, we can have that Holy Spirit bringing up this Word in us that we can take courage because God calls us to be courageous. All right, so we're being tested. They are all stubbornly rebellious, going about with slanders. They are bronze and iron. All of them act corruptly. The bellows blow fiercely. The lead is consumed by the fire. In vain the refining goes on, for the wicked are not removed. Rejected silver they are called, for the Lord has rejected them. Wow, that's something. We don't want to be rejected by the Lord. Now we'll stay faithful. And uh, man, people have stayed faithful uh, from the beginning, there's always that remnant. It doesn't matter if you're a small child or if you're over 100 years old. You can continue to stay faithful to God and we are not even to worry. It's not going to change one hair on our head to worry that we can have joy and life in Christ who is the way, the truth, and the life. All right, let's see what this den of thieves is up to in chapter 7 of Jeremiah. The word of the Lord came to Jeremiah from the Lord. Stand in the gate of the Lord's house and proclaim there this word and say, Hear the word of the Lord, all you men of Judah who enter these gates to worship the Lord. Thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel. Wow, the God of Israel. Well, Paul says it, that uh, we in Christ are the Israel of God. Uh, so it's made up, of course, Paul was Jewish, so it's made up of Jews and and Gentiles. Yeah, meaning from the tribe of Judah, that's where you get that Jew, because that's where the, the Messiah was coming from. That's where Jesus Christ was coming from, that line from David. And, uh, you know, he is that seed of the woman who would, his heel would be bruised, but he was going to crush the, the crown of that serpent. So that's what he did for us. Amend your ways and your deeds, and I will let you dwell in this place. Do not trust in these deceptive words. This is the temple of the Lord, the temple of the Lord, the temple of the Lord. Okay, so they're just, they're so attached to that temple. Well, God was rearing up another temple, wasn't he? Which was going to be made up of people. Uh, all of you that are in the Lord, precious stones made as his temple that he would dwell in. For if you truly amend your ways and your deeds, if you truly execute justice one with another, if you do not oppress this, the traveler, the fatherless, the widow, or shed innocent blood in this place, and if you do not go after other gods to your own harm, then I will let you dwell in this place in the land that I gave of old to your fathers forever. Well, sadly, they couldn't do that. Even when they had Christ right there before them, telling them what was right, they could not listen, but they just rejected Him. And look at what they were doing to their, their fellow citizens. Uh, they didn't take care of their own people even. Behold, you trust in deceptive words to no avail. Will you steal, murder, commit adultery, swear falsely, make offerings to Baal, and go after other gods that you have not known, and then come and stand before me in this house? 
which is called by my name and say, we are delivered. Quite pompously, weren't they saying that they are the men and women of God uh, and that God, he will deliver us. No, not when they will not do what he said. They weren't even obedient. Only to go on doing all these abominations. Has this house, which is called by my name, become a den of thieves in your eyes? Now, see, that's the exact words that Jesus used. He, he drove them out of the temple saying, Do not make my father's house a den of thieves. Now, when he was going to the cross, he said, Your house has been made desolate. Wow, so you can see the comparisons with the destruction that's coming on Jerusalem and the temple at 586 B.C. and the destruction that came at 70 A.D. And Jesus had told them before, not one stone will be on this temple. It'll all be tore down. And it surely was because as it was burnt, the gold was going between the cracks and the Romans turned all those stones over. Behold, I myself have seen it, declares the Lord. Go now to my place that was in Shiloh, where I made my name dwell at first, and see where, what I did to it because of the evil of my people Israel. Now, because you have done all these things, declares the Lord, and when I spoke to you persistently, you didn't listen. And when I called, you didn't answer. Therefore, I will do to this house that is called by my name, and in which you trust, and to the place that I gave to you and to your fathers, as I did in Shiloh. And I will cast you out of my sight, as I cast out all your kinsmen off of the offspring of Ephraim. So he called and they didn't listen. Uh, look, God has put the call out. Uh, all you got to do is answer the call. Uh, see, he brought in the word, Jesus Christ, and that you've known the truth. And so all you got to do is turn to him and uh, repent where you're at. You don't need to turn to a man. You can turn to Jesus Christ himself. Uh, praise God wherever you're at. As for you, do not pray for this people or lift up a cry or prayer for them and do not intercede with them. Wow, the time is so short. There's no time for intercession. Uh, we got the intercession of Jesus. For I will not hear you. Do you not see what they are doing in the cities of Judah and in the streets of Jerusalem? The children gather wood, the fathers kindle fire, the women knead dough and make cakes for the queen of heaven. See, they got their false idols. And they pour out drink offerings to other gods to provoke me to anger. Is it I whom they provoke, declares the Lord? Is it not themselves to their own shame? Therefore, thus says the Lord God, Behold, my anger and my wrath will be poured out on this place, upon man and beast, upon the trees of the field, and the fruit of the ground. It will burn and not be quenched. Wow, that's something. Uh, so he's showing us in a physical way that, look, if you reject me, you've gotten nothing but death but I'm here to give you eternal life and uh, that you'll inherit the whole world just like it was in the Garden of Eden so you got to make a choice thus says the Lord of hosts the God of Israel add your burnt offerings and your sacrifices and eat the flesh for in the day that I brought them out of the land of Egypt I did not speak to your fathers or command them concerning burnt offerings and sacrifices but this command I gave them obey my voice and I will be your God, and you shall be my people, and walk in all the way that I command you, that it may be well with you. But they didn't obey or incline their ear, but walked in their own counsels and stubbornness of their evil hearts, and went backward and not forward. Wow, they were backslidden. From the day that your fathers came out of the land of Egypt to this day, I have persistently sent all my servants, the prophets, to them day after day, yet they didn't listen to me or incline their ear, but stiffened their neck. They did worse than their fathers. So you shall speak all these words to them, but they will not listen to you. Wow, so think about it. Being a prophet to speak to them, you got to go out and speak, even though they won't listen. Wow. You shall call to them, but they will not answer you. And you shall say to them, This is the nation that did not obey the voice of the Lord their God and did not accept discipline. Truth has perished, and it is cut off from their lips. Cut off your hair and cast it away. Raise a lamentation on the bare heights. For the Lord has rejected and forsaken the generation of His wrath. 
For the sons of Judah have done evil in my sight, declares the Lord. They have set their detestable things in the house that is called by my name to defile it. Well, a wife wouldn't want to defile her husband's name, but that's what they do uh, to God who is um, like the groom to the bride. And they have built the high places of Topheth, which is in the valley of the son of Hinnom, to burn their sons and their daughters in the fire. Wow, see, they were worshiping to Moloch and burning their own sons and daughters. And think about the abortions we have today. Uh, thousands and thousands of babies are aborted. Not only that, when you think about the men uh, that are eager for war, uh, unjust warfare is killing thousands just as bad as uh, abortion is. Okay, which I did not command, nor did it come into my mind. Therefore, behold, the days are coming, declares the Lord, when it will no more be called Topheth or the valley of the son of Hinnom. Wow, okay. That's right there, uh, right around Jerusalem. But the valley of slaughter, for they will bury in Topheth, because there is no room elsewhere. And the dead bodies of this people will be food for the birds of the air, and for beasts of the earth, and none will frighten them away. And I will silence in the cities of Judah, and in the streets of Jerusalem, the voice of mirth, the voice of gladness, the voice of bridegroom, and the voice of the bride, for the land shall become a desolation. Wow, Jesus knew exactly what he was talking about when he talked to them uh, when he came. And then 40 years later, desolation, and there were so many dead bodies there. Even Titus, the Roman general that came up against him, raised his hands up and said, God, this is not of me. Uh, because even though he was a pagan, uh, well, it's, you know, Sometimes a pagan, maybe they really want to truly know God, but maybe they're ignorant. Maybe they don't know. That's why we have been given a ministry of reconciliation that we can go about and speak the truth so they can hear the truth and they might be saved. Praise God. Chapter 8 now that we're in, let's see what it's got for us. At that time, declares the Lord, the bones of the kings of Judah, the bones of its officials, the bones of the priests, the bones of the prophets, and the bones of the inhabitants of Jerusalem shall be brought out of their tombs, and they shall be spread before the sun and the moon and all the host of heaven, which they have loved and served, which they have gone after, and which they have sought and worshipped, and they shall not be gathered or buried. They shall be as dung on the surface of the ground." Whoa, now that's really something. You know, now here we have the God that can raise up dry bones to life. And these would rather worship uh, false idols and, instead of worshiping the true and living God. Yeah, no, have no fear of man who are worshiping these things, who uh, they don't know what the signs are talking about. But uh, we know what God is talking about, the true God. Death shall be preferred to life by all the remnant that remains of this evil family in all the places where I have driven them, declares the Lord of hosts. You shall say to them, thus says the Lord, when men fall, do they rise again? If one turns away, does he not return? Why then has this people turned away in perpetual backsliding? They hold fast to deceit. They refuse to return. I've paid attention and listened, but they have not spoken rightly. No man relents of his evil, saying, What have I done? Everyone turns to his own course like a horse plunging headlong into battle. Even the stork in the heavens knows her times, and the turtle dove, swallow, and crane keep the time of their coming. But my people know not the rules of the Lord. How can you say we are wise and the law of the Lord is with us? But behold, the lying pen of the scribes has made it into a lie. The wise men shall be put to shame. They shall be dismayed and taken. Behold, they have rejected the word of the Lord. So what wisdom is in them? Wow, praise God. Well, teach your children the word of the Lord so that they don't become foolish like men of the world is because God himself is saying, look, these are foolish. And uh, yeah, a fool says in his heart, there is no God even. Therefore, I will give their wives to others and their fields to conquerors, because from the least to the greatest, everyone is greedy for unjust gain. Wow, talk about 
thinking about that unjust gain. Uh, that is not good at all, and we can see that. I pray that nations have uh, good politicians because every politician will be accountable to God Almighty, and they should be fearing God. Greedy for unjust gain from prophet to priest, everyone deals falsely. They have healed the wound of my people lightly, saying, peace, peace, when there is no peace. Were they ashamed when they committed abominations? No, they were not at all ashamed. They did not know how to blush. Therefore, they shall fall among the fallen when I punish them. They shall be overthrown, says the Lord. When I would gather them, declares the Lord, there are no grapes on the vine, nor figs on the fig trees. Even the leaves are withered, and what I gave them have passed away from them. Wow. Why did we sit still, gather together? Let us go into the fortified cities and perish there. For the Lord our God has doomed us to perish and has given us poisoned water to drink because we have sinned against the Lord. Well, that's right. It is really having sinned against the Lord. We looked for peace, but no good came. For a time of healing, but beheld terror. The snorting of their horses is heard from Dan. At the sound of the neighing of their stallions, the whole land quakes. They come and devour the land and all that fills it, the city and those who dwell in it. For behold, I am sending among you serpents, adders that cannot be charmed, and they shall bite you, declares the Lord. Well, you know, Jesus said, I give you power and authority over serpents and scorpions. You know, uh, and I'm not sure exactly what he's talking about, but, you know, uh, there are those that are going to go to death, but those that are going to go to eternal life. So don't fear what they can do to the body, because ultimately, uh, they can't hurt that. And also the demonic. You know, people at the time that Jerusalem fell 40 years after Jesus, those people were like demonic. Josephus, the Jewish historian, said they were like a ravening animal devouring itself. Uh, so uh, it's kind of like they were demon possessed too. Okay, uh, Jeremiah 8:18. 8, my joy is gone, grief is upon me, my heart is sick within me. Behold the cry of the daughter of my people for the length and breadth of the land. Is the Lord not in Zion? Is her king not in her? So here we're looking at a Lord and King. Why have they provoked me to anger with their carved images and with their foreign idols? The harvest is past, the summer is ended, and we are not saved. For the wound of the daughter of my people is my heart wounded. I mourn and dismay has taken hold of me. Wow, well you see, uh, even Jesus weep for Jerusalem and uh, so did Jeremiah. Is there no balm in Gilead? Is there no physician there? When, when then has the health of the daughter of my people not been restored? Well, if you want restoration, we gotta turn to Jesus. If we want salvation, we got to turn to Jesus. Now, praise God. God has given a way that we could have all of that restoration and uh, the salvation, the healing for the backsliding. All of that is through Jesus Christ. And uh, yeah, he came humble riding in on a donkey colt. Uh, but we see him, uh, the King of Kings, Lord of Lords, riding a horse of war also. And uh, his judgment is true. He is righteous and uh a good God that we can continue to follow him faithfully and in the end he's going to say well done good and faithful servant